Welcome back guys, we're back again with another tutorial. This time we're going to be going over how to make a crossplay server. By that I mean ones that Java accounts and Bedrock accounts can join together. So first things first, we're actually going to have to download them. So if you head to the geysermc.org, I'll leave the link in the description. Um, they've got the two plugins there. And if you look at the top, we've got a download. So that will download Geyser um, first of all. So if we head to that page now, um, and you can see we've got the latest Geyser um, files here. Um, of course, choose the one that suits your server. I've got a Spigot server, so I'm going to be downloading the Spigot version jar. So all you've got to do here is just download that. Once downloaded, just press keep and then save it down wherever you want it saved. Uh, for this instance, I'm just going to show it in the folder. Um, I'm going to copy it over and I'm going to put it on the desktop so it's easily available. So you'll notice mine has one in brackets there. That's because I do already have a copy of this. Um, so yours won't have one in bracket if you're downloading it for the first time. So from here what you do is you head up to the Geyser MC option over here, you're going to click that. Um, you're going to come down to Floodgate because we also want that plugin and you're going to come down to Master. And here you're going to have the jars for the Floodgate as well. So in this case we're going to be using a bucket jar for the Floodgate, that also works with the Spigot server. So once downloaded, I'm just going to copy that over to the desktop as well, just so it's easier to see of course if you do have a plugins folder I do recommend holding them all in there. So before we get started, one thing I do highly recommend is actually joining their Discord. Uh, I know they will tell you to join their Discord, however with Geyser MC they tend to release updates, um, sometimes daily, weekly, and these updates are really good because they iron out any little things that might pop up. You know, sometimes people report bugs, they're very quick on here to actually uh, fix the bug and then put out another update, so I do recommend joining their Discord. Not only that, you actually get a really good level of support, they've got a couple of support pages, developers are on there, and uh, if you ever get something that's not working, you can just hop on there and they'll give you an answer pretty quickly. We've downloaded our plugins successfully, now we're just going to head over to our Multicraft control panel. Um, we're going to be using the FTP file access, however if you do want to use FileZilla we do have another very neat video on that uh, which shows exactly how to log on and add plugins using that. We're going to start first of all with actually stopping the server before we change any plugins over. Once the server is stopped, we're going to go to Files and FTP File Access. Once you've logged on, it's going to bring you to all the files of your server and you're going to want to look for the plugins uh, folder right there. And once you're in, it's going to tell you what plugins you currently have installed and you can upload new ones on the left here. So we're going to hit the Upload button and we're going to choose um, Floodgate and we're going to choose Geyser. So if I double click on that, you can select another file and then we're going to go to Geyser and we're going to upload them too by hitting Submit. Once that's all done, you're going to get a little message like this uh, telling you that they've been successfully transferred over and we can go back to our actual server now. So we've started up the server to get the plugins um, sort of kick started and we're going to head on over to the console now just to make sure that everything's working as it's supposed to. So as you can see there, enabling floodgate bucket, enabling geyser and everything seems to have loaded up normally so we're actually just going to hop onto the world now just to make sure. So I've logged in on my Java account and all seems to be well. Now just time to configure a few more bits just to make sure the bedrock accounts can actually join on as well. For this we're going to be heading over to our files and our config files and we're going to be going to the geyser yml so if we head on over there it is so the config yml for geyser and we're going to hit that link there. So this is how you can link it so you can get it from a rented server and you don't just have to get it from your own hosted server um, so you just got to link the ports and the IPs up. First one to concentrate here is the port for bedrock so if I remember right my port was two. 5575. Five, now if we head down a bit we're going to want to change the port here as well uh, which is for the remote access so we're going to change the 65275 to match the same port. Now for the remote access and this is the important bit if it's set to auto here it will connect to um, this one here this IP however if you're on a rented server are you going to want to put your actual IP of the rented server here. So if I just check on my main page and I'm going to copy this one over um, come over here and I'm going to paste that instead Of course, make sure that you don't leave any extra spaces like that. Uh, there's only supposed to be one space between the colon and the number. One more thing to actually um, switch over on here is the auth type or the authentication types. This is what will um, allow Bedrock users to just log straight in. However, it, if you don't do this and if you leave it as just online, um, it's going to ask them to log in with their Java accounts as well. Um, so for this, we're just going to change that to floodgate. Now I've changed that, it's just a case of saving the file. We're going to come back to the main server page and we're going to restart our server. Whilst that's restarting we're just going to open up the Bedrock Minecraft so we can actually double check that we can log in without needing to log in with any uh, Java credentials. One neat thing 
um, is with the floodgate is that you can also, or the way that it's now configured is that you can leave it as online. You don't need to have a cracked version, as they say. Um, and, you know, you keep it official because really that's what you should be doing in the first place. And you don't want to be really making it available for people that haven't got proper Minecraft accounts. So let's hit play and go and add this server. So if I just head down to um, add servers, I'm just going to enter in the IP port and a name. Right, so our port and IP matches up, and of course we have changed it from the default Bedrock port, so that's how it's going to connect to our hosted server. Um, and with that, we're just going to press Save. And as you can see, we've got Geyser Test or Geyser MC. I'll show you how to change that in a second. However, first we just want to make sure we connect, and we can see the ping has come up straight away. Got 41 ping, it says 0 out of 100. This doesn't really change a lot. It might say 1 out of 100 if there's more players on there, um, but it doesn't seem to be totally accurate. However, that doesn't really matter when you can just join on with Bedrock to Java servers. Now, this usually happens when you first log in. It seems like you're dropped into this sort of weird infinity drop, and then it will load you up on the game. Of course, the first time you load in, it will take a few seconds just to uh, bug out and just get used to it. However, I am now on my Java server. Um, and that's all it took, as you can see, it was a well, it wasn't a very long video at all. We can run it around, not only that, you do actually get some achievements as well. Um, it's not 100% of them, but um, like 80% of the achievements, I seem to get anything from you know, taming wolves. Uh, breaking wood oddly seems to be the only one that I don't actually get so far, but you know, if I craft a table, um, and not only that, the hitbox works in the same way. And just to confirm for anyone a bit skeptical whether this works or not, I'm also going to open up my Java account at the same time, and we're just going to greet each other. As you can see on my bedrock account i did have a little star right next to my name that means it's a bedrock user um, especially now it might get a bit confusing because i've got the exact same name on java however you can tell the difference because the star one is the bedrock one now if we just put the screens side by side as we load in you should be able to see um, i do believe the other character should be quite close and seek a host uh, just wait for that one to load up there it's our test server for seek a host of course and we've got 1 out of 24, so it's recognizing who it is. It's actually telling us who it is there as well. So let's click on that and join, and we should now be able to meet the other JDog on Bedrock with our Java account. Right, so we've loaded in. I do believe we've loaded in in pretty much exactly the same space, um, and I think I ran this way. Let's see if we can uh, find my character now. There he is, and I can see him. He's not, unfortunately, got his uh, uniform on. I do believe some do work, some don't. Um, but as you can see, I'm now staring at Bedrock JDog, um, and he is staring at Java JDog. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you found that helpful, and you can get that added to your servers yourself. Any uh, questions, or if you need any more videos like this, just check out Seeker Host Knowledge Base, um, or of course my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.